So back home, uh, it's evening time, time to clean fish. So one of the things with uh, spending three days out uh, fishing and then traveling four or five hours home, the rules in most places, and I know in several states in the US as well as uh, where we are here in BC, to transport fish, the fish need to be able to be identified. Um, and if there's restrictions on length, uh, they basically have to be whole. Uh, so what we did with these is we bled them out on the ice. Uh, we got them while we were out there. When we got back to the truck, we took the gills out and then put them in plastic bags and use this big cooler and put in layer of snow, layer of fish, layer of snow, layer of fish, layer of snow. Keep them nice and cold um, in the cooler for transporting home so that we didn't have any problems if we got pulled over and checked by the conservation officers. So what we're going to do now is start to clean these things. If, if you're watching uh, a lot of videos or talking to people, a lot of times with the lane cod, people will skin them first and then kind of whittle the meat off the bones. Uh, I'm going to do this just a little bit differently than that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this looks like a, a little bit easier way to you. But honestly, the bone structure on these is exactly the same as most other fish. Uh, the only thing I noticed with these is their ribs are a little bit shorter. Uh, but it just makes them easier to clean. Um, but we still end up with salvaging absolutely every scrap of meat, completely deboning, no skin on, and it's just, a, to me, it's an easier way to do this. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do here and you can make your own decision. So here's one of the, the medium-sized link cod that I brought back. Uh, these things are slimy, so instead of using a cutting board, uh, using this big towel, it just really helps hold these things in place while you're working on them. And then also just a little hand towel to uh, get a better grip on these. <clears throat> but I'm just gonna run the knife down behind the neck, right down all the way up. And um, we're just basically gonna clean these like you would a bass or, or a perch or how I clean trout too. So I'll uh, show you what we're gonna do here. Just down to the spine. We want to salvage the stomach meat. So now we're just going to run the knife down, right all the way down. You're going to try to keep just a little bit of an angle toward the spine and keep the knife flat, uh, flush with the, the shape of the fish here. See, takes all the skin off. I'm just gonna take a knife, get this piece out of the way. I'm gonna flip this over. First thing we're gonna do is right at the back of the ribs. So we're just gonna cut this piece right off. Now the ribs come down to about here. Like I said, the ribs are much shorter. I would have expected them to come down more into the stomach, but they only come down just a very short ways. These do have the lateral line bones that come off of the ribs. So where the ribs come off the spine, we're just gonna cut down through these until you feel that other set of bones, and then you're just gonna follow those out. And then always one thing about caring for fish, whether it's in the field or at home, is you wanna just make sure that you always keep the meat very cold. 
Okay, and then we're just gonna flip this over. We'll go right down the other side of those lateral line bones. And you'll just, you'll be able to feel the bones on the knife. And with these bigger fish, you really don't need to worry about cutting through the bone, but cleans it all up very nicely and no bones. One of the other things you want to do once you get it to this spot is just kind of run your fingers over it. You can feel if you missed any bones. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of fish you're cleaning. Yeah, say I missed, uh, feels like there's a, might be a rib, yep, rib bone right here. A um, couple of them. With any fish, uh, when you're trying to debone them, especially if they got smaller bones like the trout do on their lateral lines. Um, you just always double check it and just make sure you got it. The last thing you want to do is serve uh, boneless meat to somebody that isn't truly boneless. Last part of this is just storing the meat. Um, because I was fortunate enough to have about four of these that were fairly good size, I'm going to sort these out by cut. So uh, stomachs, loins, and the tails. And then I'm going to vacuum seal all of these and make sure they're clearly marked as to what's in each bag because we'll be using each one of these cuts for different recipes over the next couple weeks. If you don't have a vacuum sealer you need to be careful how long you leave the fish in the freezer. Uh, you can put them in a Ziploc bag but you need to make sure and try to get as much of the air out as you can. Uh, kind of rolling them to the end and then sealing it up and then put it inside of another Ziploc bag and uh, doing the same thing is going to give you a lot better chance to have meat that's not going to be freezer burnt if you leave it in the freezer for two, three weeks. The, the Ziploc bags don't protect the meat very well. And we're off to the freezer. Check back over the next few weeks for some, uh, some recipes for cooking cod. I can promise you that you're not going to see any, any more poor man lobster videos. I've got some amazing recipes for cooking these several different ways and I'm happy to share with you guys. So don't forget to subscribe and keep checking back.